uh, that we're going to be hearing from. But first, there's some prize draws. I'm sure everybody knows Emily. Emily, I'm going to hand over to you. Okay. All right. I'll be brief because the case studies that are coming up are way better than me. Um, for the photo contest, the winner is Mohammed of Avery Denison. Yeah. And <laughs> you win a pair of Bose nose-canceling headphones from Mason. Woo! For the top app user, Nick Castillo from Raytheon, who wins, yeah, you can come up here and he wins a, a Yeti cooler from T-Mobile, which we don't have here. We're going to ship it to him. <laughs> and it's an 18-packer, so he's good. He's, he's going to the beach. He's good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And the winner of this one is going to win a giant TV from Rave Computer. I Yes, this is the sticker contest. So Keith Klein, Marathon Petroleum. Are you here? <laughs> So I'll put you in touch with April over there from Rave Computer to work out the TV thing. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Emily. I was wondering how they're going to get my TV back to the UK, but thankfully I didn't win it. Um, so let's get going with some fantastic talks. So I'd like to introduce Michael and Carrie from Bayer. Uh, I'm super looking forward to this one as well. So guys, please come up onto the stage. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mark. Wait for a second for our deck to queue up. OK, great. Thanks, everybody, for sticking around. Uh, it's been a great experience for us. We're so happy to be here and happy to share a couple of use cases that we've, uh, we've been participating in over the, the past couple of years. Uh, so just a quick introduction, I'm Mike Cavillo, and I'm a senior user experience research researcher at Bayer Crop Science. Uh, and so I've got about 25 plus years uh, in various industries as a user experience professional. And so it's been really, really refreshing to see the emphasis on really kind of starting with the end user and their needs. So I'll uh, hand it over to Carrie real quickly. Yeah, thank you. Carrie Roy, um, also a user experience researcher at Bayer. And my background is in ethnography. I um, have also done work in digital humanities and worked in virtual reality labs. Thanks, Carrie. So we are going to spend some time giving you just a little bit of context about our industry. Just so you have an idea, uh, Bayer is a large company, right? And so I had somebody ask me uh, whether or not we were actually going to hand out free aspirin. Uh, and uh, I might, depending on how well our talk goes. But we'll give you a little overview of just kind of scoping out crop science and what we do and who our end users are, and a little bit about what we do as product designers and how we ended up working and looking towards augmented reality solutions. Uh, so we'll spend a little bit of time on that, and then we'll move right into our use cases. We have two different ones. One is, uh, focuses on the smaller form factor, the smart glasses. Uh, and its focus, uh, or the, the name of the project, is Accelerate. Uh, and so I'll talk about that a little bit, and then I'll move it right over uh, with Carrie, who will f uh, speak about the Hollow Popper, uh, which is a, a technology that we, uh, or a solution, I should say, that we used to uh, leverage the uh, Microsoft HoloLens. So just to kind of give you an overview of, uh, of where we're going. So our industry, uh, our products are seeds and traits, uh, as well as crop protection. So again, chemistries, right? And so if you think about uh, just a, a mental model of the workspace that we're in, a funnel is a really good analogy. Uh, and again, the reason is because it's a pipeline. It, it takes anywhere from eight to 10 years for one particular, uh, let's say a corn seed, to move through early discovery research into the commercial market. Uh, and so that's a fairly long time, and obviously we have a lot of candidates that are operating in that space. Um, 
our our uh, focus uh, with regards to that is you know uh, the environment uh, from a technology perspective is you know many of you are probably used to legacy systems right and so uh, you know there's a quite a changing landscape of IT products and experiences that our end users really have to to address as uh, part of their you know kind of going for their goals uh, a bit about our end users uh, most of the folks that we work with are scientists uh, and so Carrie and I right now are are working in the discovery and lab area, right? And so we work with people that are trained in biotechnology or breeding or chemistry, right? And so uh, some pretty heavy duty scientists uh, end up being our end users in that space. Uh, we came from an area called pipeline, right? And so that's really where the advancement process moves out of doors. And so we're conducting experiments in fields, right? Uh, and so with that, uh, our, our, our research, uh, our colleagues are doing research with large experiments uh, and big data, right? And so uh, trying to make decisions fairly quickly. Anything that we can do to help them accelerate the pipeline is always a good thing. Now, interestingly, you'll notice that we also have one set of users that really sort of uh, are temporary workers, right? So these are maybe college kids that come into play during the growing season and, and they might be collecting data, et cetera, right? And so we have uh, you know, some variability in the personas that we work with. For our, our part and our roles, we do a lot of discovery work. As you can imagine, a very large organization like Bayer, we have a number of different functions, and a lot of the work that gets done from an IT perspective needs to be funded. Uh, and so we get a really good cross-sectional view into the organization to really understand where common needs exist. Uh, it's not really that uh, profitable or useful for us to, de to develop uh, experiences and products that are so tailored to one particular group that others can't use it, right? So we're always looking for opportunities to have something a little bit more ubiquitous. Okay, and the environments that we work in, I think our, our talks will really underscore this, right? So on the one hand, we have internal environments, controlled environments, greenhouses, growth chambers, those sorts of things where we're, we're gathering data and evaluating the performance of our products. On the other hand, we're working outdoors. People uh, are exposed to uh, various uh, environmental factors uh, like sun, uh, heat, um, you know, moisture, th those kinds of things. Uh, and so we have a, a need to kind of solve problems in those two spaces. Before we tell our story, one of the things that we wanted to make sure to communicate was that we th have to always think carefully about the technologies that we select. And so here you're going to see that for our problem spaces, we had two different uh, but appropriately selected solutions. Uh, both of these were vendors that you hopefully had the opportunity to, to speak with and maybe share some of your uh, um, needs and uh, aspirations as you work through this space uh, uh, as well. So let's start off with the, the story of Accelerate. Accelerate is a mobile application, and we used uh, the, the iris stick uh, um, unit, which is, uh, again, the smart glasses form factor. Uh, and that that's the, uh, was the unit that we felt was the, the most appropriate. And the, uh, the, the use case really kind of evolves around or centers around data collection. So imagine you're uh, an agronomist or a scientist, and you're in the middle of Iowa somewhere in a cornfield, and it's uh, early July and the conditions are terrible, and you're trying to collect data. And in some cases, you might have a narrow window to collect that data. It might be two or three days, or maybe uh, up to a week, right? Plants pollinate, and so they're very um, kind of amenable to the environmental conditions that are going on at, at certain times, and so there's a narrow window. But as we uh, work through some of the uh, requirements of looking toward product visions, because this particular project started, as many do, with requests by one of our product managers to really get a better understanding of how well our products are working, and more importantly, what does the product future li look like from a roadmap or from a product vision point of view? So we conducted a lot of interviews with end users in different contexts, and we really tried to take a, a really good audit of, well, what are the what are the needs that they have, right? And so when we think about the environment, it can be harsh, mo you know, moisture, heat, glare, uh, those sorts of things that really, even in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, if we walk outside, sometimes it's very difficult to, to use mobile devices. 
Before we narrowed in on augmented reality, though, we did uh, some diagnostics around just the general attributes of the problem. So what sorts of things would be helpful for us to do, regardless of what solution we implemented, right? And so we knew that after, uh, you know, didn't take us long after a few interviews to understand that we really wanted to be able to leverage hands-free, right? And so with hands-free would come things like speech to text, right? If I'm entering data, I'm going to need to be able to to do that very quickly. One of the things that we learned about our, our uh, constituents is, well, I don't care what tools you give me, just make sure you don't slow me down. Uh, and so things like speech to text, we knew that we had to have a heads up display. Out in the field, we don't really have access to Wi-Fi, right? So we had to figure out a good way to be able to capture that data and then upload it uh, in cases where uh, I, I was near a Wi-Fi connection. The other thing that's really critical and the thing that I really appreciate is the, the wearability factor, the comfort level. Just because we have the capability to do it, will they wear it? Will they use it? Uh, and so a number of other factors weighed into uh, kind of making the decision to, to select the form factor and the technological capabilities of this particular product, the iris stick. Here's a video of uh, an early research of a use case I want to share with you. And if you get maybe some, a little bit more volume on this. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, Five. Take photo. Because there's herbicide there. Birds. Capture. Save. Guinea grass. Confirm. All right. Looks good. So that was a clip from Hawaii. Our work was funded. We had to do competitive funding. Our organization isn't structured in a way that we have, let's say, uh, uh, within the, the official organizational structure, emerging technologies or augmented reality. Uh, we are really pretty much a, gr uh, a grassroots, ground up approach. Uh, and so we had to pitch for funding, we got it. And with the funding uh, constraint was a time constraint. We had to you know, kind of get things done fairly quickly. Uh, and so what you saw was just an early pilot trial of uh, one of the operators in Hawaii gathering uh, field information. And uh, the, the metaphor that I think is most uh, convenient when you look at this particular product around Accelerate is uh, what we, we refer to as uh, say it, see it, right? So if you noticed in the upper right-hand corner, he might have, uh, you know, uttered the, the, you know, the word five, uh, and then that, that that number appeared up in the, the viewport up in the right-hand corner of the iris stick unit, right? And so that was done with a great deal of intention and a fair amount of uh, what we'll call low-fidelity research, you know, propagating that through, uh, you know, simulating that through PowerPoint and really understanding, hey, we really want to leverage the visual uh, channel to, to quality check the information, but we want, to, we want to leverage the auditory channel to input the data. Uh, one of the findings that we had in our interview was that people were spending time quality checking the data after they left a particular location, so they can sort of do this quality checking on the fly as they go. Here's another use case that, again, because we were still evolving this initiative, we uh, found out that, hey, this particular solution was also of great interest to people in the greenhouse. And that was great because it gave us uh, a nice little, uh, fairly good situation to get quick uh, feedback and to uh, refine and evaluate the product as we went forward. So one thing that I'll apologize in advance is going to be very loud, uh, but again, it, it really uh, demonstrates the importance of one particular characteristic of this particular unit that we, we needed to have, and that was noise cancellation capabilities. Uh, in, in this case, we have loud fans running in the greenhouse, but obviously you can see that or hear that, uh, obviously outdoors, uh, maybe during harvest time when we're running combines. Scan. 15. So you'll notice in that particular workflow that uh, that particular user was um, starting the workflow through a scan, right? So, so uh, QR optical scanning. The, other, the previous one that I showed you outside with Colin in the field, uh, began, that workflow began with really just sort of a, a verbal uh, 
ID. And so we built some flexibility into the, the workflow, but we didn't build it extremely complicated. Again, we wanted to make it robust so that we could you know, really demonstrate the capabilities. And uh, again, I think that really played out quite nicely in terms of um, expanding our touch across the organization with this particular solution. Uh, I think when we started, we had maybe four or five units in place, and now we have over 200. And it's really interesting because we're not really loading in one particular area. It's not like breeding wants all of these. We're actually cutting across a number of the row crops and into vegetables uh, in the U.S. and across the globe. So that's really sort of been our uptake model that we've seen. This slide really kind of speaks to some of the ROI bullet points of the biotech organization. And they were the ones that really championed this. And part of the reason was because they collected data uh, in pairs. And during COVID, they weren't able to, uh, to do that in a way that was effective. And so you know, maybe two uh, people would go out into the field. One person would, uh, would yell out the observation. The other person would enter it in, right? And so we really reduced that role or that function uh, by that particular um, uh, you know, magnitude. Again, as you just sort of browse some of these results, and again, these, these are things that we really wanted to strive for in our proof of concept. Not only will it work, but can we obtain results? And so uh, this particular initiative uh, was recognized by the biotechnology organization through a, a, a life award in the category of efficiency. Uh, and so that was really a, a feather in their cap. There's some really interesting ROI information uh, around, you know, Outfitting these folks, uh, nine particular users in this case, what are the cost of the headsets and the, you know, the, the, the software development, which again, both of our solutions are proprietary. Uh, but again, it was a fairly short turnaround before it had, had fully paid for itself. I want to kind of move on quickly. Okay, and so really kind of the last, let's say two things that I want to talk about. We have been very pleased with the progress and the adoption of this particular solution uh, at Bear Crop Science. It started out as a proof of concept, and now it is a fully supported product in the organization that we both work in, Products and Engineering, which is the IT leg of the Research and Development Organization. And so uh, to have an offering like this and to, 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 to make it available, I think really shows uh, some, let's say, uh, um, penetration of this particular technology and these, these solutions uh, in this organization. And again, it really starts with the demand by the folks uh, that we, we spoke with our end users. We have some other use cases uh, in flight right now. One uh, is in entomology, right? So counting bugs, different insects. Uh, there's a number of use cases there. Clearly, we've seen through uh, this interaction here warehousing. Uh, and then also uh, quality, uh, quality assurance applications in some of our, our larger seed processing organizations. These are some of the more salient uh, use cases that we're seeing and that have a lot of promise for this particular form factor. So what I'd like to do right now then is turn it over to Carrie Roy, and she's going to take us into uh, another use case uh, with a little bit slightly different technology. Thank you. Great. All right, so an introduction to this uh, problem space the uh, popper workflow. So in bear crop science, speed to market is critical. And that means sometimes you need to make advancement decisions when the plants are still very small. And so that's kind of the context of the workflow that we're gonna be looking at here. So this is the popper machine. Um, in order to make those advancement decisions about which plants should go forward, it's important to consider two factors. So one is visible, is this plant healthy and robust? And two is the invisible. So those would be the specific genetic markers that our scientists are interested in understanding better. So it needs to have those two things. Um, that's where the popper comes into play. So our greenhouse teams go, uh, go to the plants, take samples. They then get them genetically tested. When the results from those tests come back, they bring them into the popper room. And you can see uh, this tray of plants here. That's a corresponding uh, file. The green circles indicate the plants that have the desired genetic marker. And then this popper machine will pop the plants up. Uh, so imagine like you had three of these flats of plants, maybe 30 of those plants have the desired genetic marker, and your job is to pick the top 20 healthiest. So that's, that's the idea here, and here's a quick demo. Not exactly a speed demon. It just slowly pops one up at a time. You don't have control over which one it's popping up. But that's your kind of window to evaluate that plant and move forward. 
So we interviewed a lot of people in the greenhouse environments and asked them um, about the types of pain points they were experiencing. Lots of great potential AR opportunities here from guiding plant placement to tracking plants from one location to another um, to selecting plants, finding those plants. Um, also safety options. So lightning strikes are dangerous, alerting people to that. Even safety for our plants. Certain plants cannot go into certain rooms. Um, so a lot of different opportunities there. But the popper really emerged as this we talked about soft ROI. It is a cold, hard ROI case because this is an old piece of equipment, it's expensive, and it really is you know, end of life here. And so this was particularly helpful because when you're talking about emerging technology and adoption, having that um, kind of firm number about what you could potentially save by introducing it really helps. Um, new tech is risky, and, and when you're looking at a big price tag like this, it certainly helps in the conversation. Um, so as you can see, not supported software at this point, $250,000 per machine. And we're talking two machines here. Now, this one is particularly for corn, but there are others. Um, and with the hollow popper workflow, the AR workflow, it's 40% faster. Um, so a lot of great options with this development. I'm going to show you a view of this is kind of the screen capture from the hollow popper workflow. We partnered with another reality studio out of St. Louis. This is Patrick's video here. So he is opening a folder. All the files relevant to the flats that he's gonna be looking at are in here. And then he selects that one and he has the tray of plants in front of him. Um, out of this demo here, he's gonna select five. So that's the quota he wants to reach. And then to kick off the workflow, you have the prompt to scan your source tray. That's the tray where you're going to be evaluating the plants and seeing which ones you want to bring forward. Okay, so now that genetic marker information is overlaid on the plants. And it's now prompting him to scan in the destination tray. So that's going to be our advancement tray. All of the top, you know, healthy, uh, top performing plants are going to go into this tray. The first position of that first plant is that green circle in, one, in the 1A spot. So, Goes over to the source tray, is looking at the plants. That's the eye cursor on that first plant. And with a uh, ring clicker he has on his non-dominant hand, he's gonna click a button that says advance or discard. In this case, he's gonna advance it. That solid green circle turns to hollow because he is now advancing it to the new location. And we are tracking the new position of this particular plant in that advancement tray. Taking a look at the next plant, this one, maybe not so healthy. Uh, maybe he chooses to discard, so that's a click on the ring. And now we have the options for choose your discard option. In this case, it's chimeric, and so um, that is recorded in our files. We have visibility into what happened with that plant and why, and can move on. He can also pull up information about any particular plant that he's interacting with. Um, so really exciting to enable that type of interaction in this instance. So, the old popper mechanical rigid linear workflow has really been transformed uh, through this AR application. You know, and beyond the, the half million in savings and the 40% uh, faster workflow, uh, it's been really interesting to hear from the team that they see the most value added here as being an enhancement to their decision-making process. Um, that really is critical to our uh, you know, effort in designing the best, most robust crops. Um, so exciting that by enabling the flexibility here, we have optimized the selection process, enabling someone to look down at a uh, tray of plants, and you can start anywhere. You can just pick the healthiest plant. Now this in contrast to the old workflow, which was really linear. You had to start in that first tray, you had to go through it in the, the popper's dictated order, go to the second tray, and there was no going back. And so, you know, that's your one point to say, am I gonna take this plant or not? Uh, next one, yes or no, that, that's your window. You can't go back, you can't go back to the previous tray. So it's exciting to enable um, this rank order is really what we have now. You can imagine in that old workflow, if you got towards the end of the third flat and you'd already reached your quota, and yet here are the healthiest looking plants, they don't get advanced. Uh, but with the flexibility we've enabled, 
now you not only can pick the best plants, but we have a ranked order. So the healthiest plants are gonna be in that A1 position. And so it's visibility into the top performers that we really didn't have before. So um, that popper was built for corn. That's the only thing it could handle. With this approach now, with the hollow popper AR workflow, we can deal with any trays, any crops, any plants. So that's exciting. But also looking at more efficient decision making, um, stronger selection of our candidates, uh, this ranking advancement, it's transparency we didn't have before. Um, so all really quite exciting there. Both the Iristic uh, Accelerate example and the hollow popper wor workflow are really transforming our workflows uh, in ways that leverage AR technology. So Iristic, you know, emphasis on don't slow me down, we need speed, we need to collect this data quickly, and enabling hands-free, those are critical. Um, really big steps forward in that department. And for the HoloLens, we're now guiding and enabling an optimized selection workflow. Um, so these efforts definitely start with end users in mind. We've done over 100 interviews with people all across the organization, just better understanding the pain points. And um, it is exciting as designers to be able to hear these pain points and then th think creatively about how we imagine people being able to move through these workflows, leveraging this technology. So we've always had end users on our innovation teams. And on that note, I'm gonna invite Patrick Pridgen to come up here. He's been a great contributor and collaborator. He represents the end users. Um, and at this time, the three of us would welcome any questions that you have. Firstly, round of applause. Fantastic, yeah. thank you very much, guys. Love we'll some questions from the audience. Does anybody? Who's going to put their hands up first? Uh, with the second project, uh, how long did that take to develop with your partners, um, uh -huh. just from like a, a timeline standpoint? <laughs> you want to take that, or do you want me to? Okay. So uh, because it was innovation funding, uh, and because, interestingly, we were in a position where the three of us were actually Monsanto legacy uh, employees, and so we were acquired by Bayer a couple of years ago, we had a, a little bit of delays in terms of when we actually started it and when we wanted to finish it and when we actually did. So if I, if I extract those months, uh, unfortunately that's what, was, uh, what, what uh, it was, I would say uh, we're close to uh, uh, like eight or nine months from beginning to end. On the iris stick, uh, that, was much more, that was more quick. Uh, again, Carrie had mentioned that with, uh, with the HoloLens, we had partnered with a third party uh, development team in the St. Louis area. The iris stick, we actually had the uh, advantage of leveraging an internal development team. Uh, and so we were under the gun a little bit more quickly from a time perspective. So that all came together uh, inside of three months. Thank you. And the, the Iris Stick is a, an amazing product as well. Just jumping onto the HoloLens, and it, in the part, it talks about the greenhouse. Are you actually using it in a greenhouse environment? And was there any implications of that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that one. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I work uh, nested within the actual uh, production team, and we have started. So after that, uh, the version that she demoed, we uh, decided to, because of the excitement and the progress that we had made with what was uh, essentially intended to be a proof of concept, uh, but we, we made really good progress. We had good engagement from the end users and good engagement from leadership, and so we, we are actually continuing to fund that now. And so that phase one that she demoed is currently uh, in production, and that phase two, which expands the capabilities in a number of different ways and expands uh, our ability to do different crops that we weren't able to do with the first version, is uh, currently in the, the last phases of delivery, and uh, we intend to have that implemented in production by the end of the year. Fantastic. Congratulations. I think another round of applause. Thank you very much for an amazing talk. Thanks, everybody.